Hello, this is Leanne McGlynn with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Today in our procedural skills series, we'll discuss chest tube placement for relief of pneumothoraces. Air leak, otherwise known as a pneumothoraces, in the neonatal population can be a deadly situation. Neonates also have many risk factors that contribute to air leak. These include, but are not limited to, respiratory distress syndrome, mechanical ventilation, sepsis, pneumonia, aspiration of meconium, blood, or amniotic fluid, or a congenital malformation. In addition, spontaneous pneumothoraces can occur in 1-2% to of otherwise normal appearing neonates. In the NICU and on transport, the staff must be prepared to diagnose and treat pneumothoraces in a timely manner. Because of the close proximity of vital structures, supple chest wall, and frail lung tissue, a firm understanding of the anatomy of the chest is imperative. You must realize that the chest contains two lungs and the mediastinal organs and vessels. Both the mediastinum and the chest are lined with two sets of pleura, the visceral and the parietal. The parietal pleura lines the chest wall and the thoracic side of the diaphragm. A continuation of the parietal pleura surrounds the heart and mediastinum. The visceral pleura surrounds the lungs. The primary function of the pleura is protective. In other words, it prevents the lungs from rubbing against the ribs and other organs, avoiding damage by friction, and therefore providing a barrier to infection by sealing one cavity from another. In addition, because each lung has a separate set of pleura, it helps prevent both lungs from collapsing if air enters into one side. Now, there's a moistened space between these two pleura, which is known as the pleural cavity. Because of this space, the pleura ride atop each other like two pieces of plastic wrap that have been stuck together with a thin film of liquid. With the right circumstances, though, air, blood, chyle, or exudate can enter between the two layers. Neonates have little compensatory reserve when they develop a pneumothorax. Therefore, the NICU staff must be able to quickly and accurately assess a patient in respiratory distress. When this happens, a cascade of signs and symptoms are found upon physical examination, or changes in vital signs may develop. This may include increasing respiratory distress, rapid breathing, grunting, nasal flaring, and chest wall retractions. If a tension pneumothorax has occurred, a patient may be tachycardic, bradycardic, hypotensive, or even cyanotic. Upon auscultation, breath sounds could be decreased over the affected side. In addition, heart sounds may be distance or muffled or shifted to the opposite side of the pneumothorax with a concurrent shift in the point of maximal impulse. A quick non-invasive technique to assess for pneumothoraces is transillumination of the chest wall. In this instance, a cool light source is placed against the side of the chest wall with the pneumothorax. The light illuminates or radiates across the chest as seen here, rather than simply forming a halo around the light source. Conclusive evidence for a pneumothorax in the neonate is a chest x-ray. If the neonate has a pneumothoraces, the chest x-ray film will demonstrate air in the pleural space. This air on chest x-ray will appear dark black in the areas where the air is present. In addition, the lung on the affected side will be reduced in size. The heart and the mediastinal contents may be shifted as well. A pneumothorax can be treated in several ways, and if small, non-invasive measures may be considered. But if there is a large or tension pneumo, the initial step would be needle thoracentesis. But if the pneumo remains large or continues to reaccumulate, the next step would be placing a chest tube on the affected side. Once you've decided to place the chest tube, it's time to gather your equipment and supplies. And keep in mind, this should be a sterile procedure. Therefore, you will need gloves, hat, mask, and gown. You will also need to decide on an eight or 10 French Argyle trocar catheter. In addition to your chest tube, you will need sterile towels and four by four gauze, as well as hospital approved cleaner, such as betadine or chloroprep, a 3-0 curved silk suture. You'll need two by twos, a tegaderm, Vaseline gauze, normal saline wipes, as well as straight hemostats, 
curved hemostats, needle drivers, and scissors. Next, you'll place your patient affected side up and choose your landmarks, typically the fourth intercostal space, mid-axillary line. Placing your patient affected side up cannot be overemphasized as it helps the air to rise as seen in this lateral decubitus. If non-emergent and time permits, be sure to pre-medicate prior to placing your chest tube. As you prepare mentally to place the chest tube, remember you will be sliding over the top of the rib, not underneath, in order to avoid the neurovascular bundle. You'll now want to cleanse your site using hospital approved cleanser, such as chloroprep or betadine. You can then drape your patient with sterile towels and mark your landmark, again, fourth intercostal space, mid-axillary line. Paying careful attention to your landmarks, you will want to make a tiny incision one rib below the intended rib of insertion. With a closed pair of flat hemostats parallel to the patient's skin, advance those hemostats into that tiny incision. Once you've done this, open and close them in order to make a hood for your chest tube. With the trocar removed, you will place the chest tube in the curved hemostats as shown here. It is important that the chest tube is not past the end of the hemostats so that they can be used to easily punch through the fascia, muscle, and pleura. Now with the chest tube clamped within the closed hemostats, enter the previously created hood and advance to the top of the next rib while parallel to the chest. Next, tilt the hemostats to a 45 degree angle. When you do this, punch through the musculature into the pleura using pressure on top of the curved hemostats. Immediately stop advancing the hemostats when there is a loss of resistance. You can then open the hemostats and begin advancing the chest tube. You may stop advancing the chest tube when you've inserted it at least two to four centimeters depending on the patient's size. You will next take your suture, making a purse string around the end of the tube and ensuring that the tube is sutured securely in place. You can then cleanse the area of betadine and place your Vaseline gauze. You will then connect the end of your chest tube to the atrium water seal, ensuring that there's bubbling in the water seal. Throughout the procedure, you will want to perform cardiopulmonary monitoring and assess the patient before and after the procedure is completed. You'll also want to obtain a chest x-ray for verification of catheter placement and resolution of the pneumothoraces. If the pneumothoraces is not resolved or there is no bubbling in the water seal, you may consider a cross table lateral such as this one to verify that your placement of your tube is actually anterior rather than posterior as seen here. Once satisfied with placement, you can now cover the site. Again, you'll need Vaseline gauze against the skin. You can cover that with a two by two gauze and then secure it all with a tegaderm as seen in this picture. As with any invasive procedure, complications can occur, but can be avoided if special attention is paid to landmarks and pain control. These complications can include, but are not limited to, infection, bleeding, persistence of air or fluid in the pleural space, lung perforation, myocardial perforation, severing of the phrenic nerve, liver trauma with hemoperitoneum, tears of the subclavian vessels, and thymic trauma with hemorrhage. Now it's your turn. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual clinical practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.